meeting with uh, teams from uh, the council, uh, partners, businesses and individuals, and there was desktop research, scrutiny support that officers did, and quantitative evidence provided by council officers. Uh, there were 350 employees and 540 young people um, who were unemployed and actually benefited from this scheme. Uh, they were paid at age-related pay rather than apprenticeship rate and an incentive of £3,000 to employees. Through our scrutiny, it became obvious that there were failings in particular regarding to the information and guidance available for the young people leaving the school with many schools not discussing apprenticeships at all with some of the young people. Other schools were actually seeing um, it as a failure for the gifted students to even be, be considering that they would actually go into an apprenticeship. And a lot of the children who, or young people who had actually done A-levels were actually, they actually felt as though they were pushed to one side and um, really felt quite hurt by, by the comments that were made in the even considering apprenticeships. We feel we should continue to develop support and encourage the creation and accessibility to apprenticeships through providing a supportive and an enabling environment and continue to focus on developing skills which may be much needed as we look forward with our regeneration plans to be developed there and head and our global project. What we actually uh, found from uh, the discussions that we had uh, with businesses was they found that there was a lot of young people who were not work ready and um, even sort of like getting to work on time, those sort of things, they had to invest an awful lot of time to these young people. Um, uh, one business actually said they had to create a mother role in order to uh, assist the young people. And the young people had actually said that uh, without that level of support, then they don't think they would have actually completed the apprenticeship program at all. The transition from school to work uh, was really seen as an obstacle. Um, and we're all met, we met with we're all met to actually do a, a bespoke pre-apprenticeship course for this reason. Um, they, uh, you may have heard that they did a target of 100 apprentices in 100 days. They've got a huge team of people now helping their apprentices, and this support they have realised is absolutely vital. I'd really like to thank um, Mark Johnson, who had a, a fantastic uh, contribution to this report, and also uh, Tim Gaines, who's no longer working with uh, for the council. I'd also like to thank Mike Lester for picking up the pieces and the final hour. Um, okay, uh, we, we did have uh, 10 recommendations from this report, and I'm happy to go through those and take any questions. Okay, recommendation one was the officers to develop a generic, generic mentoring and pastoral care, and officers should consider the use of the business toolkit, which is already in place. Uh, recommendation two, uh, rural corporate for care leaders to access rural uh, apprenticeship vacancies using existing dialogue with employers to negotiate guaranteed interviews. Um, and again, this is something that we felt you know, was very important in order to be able to get um, people ready for work and into work. Recommendation three was a youth employment initiative funding through the European Union and the Coastal Communities Fund um, have the potential to provide funding to support the reduction of youth unemployment. Officers are requested to investigate how any part of this funding could be secured and used to provide a further pastoral support for rural apprentices. Uh, the information and guidance, um, as I said earlier, you know, we really found that quite wanting in many schools not providing um, information about apprentices at all. And only one school that uh, we actually talked to people about actually said that they got the advice and guidance regarding apprenticeships. That was a big concern of ours. Some of the quotes that we got from the young people was, I did not receive any career guidance ever. 
I've got A levels from my school and we talked about university. And uh, the other concern that we had was that apprenticeships have actually declined over the last four years. And given this level of guidance, we weren't really surprised at that. Recommended, recommendation five was to promote apprenticeship opportunities by offering um, pop-up shops at venues and dates, uh, dates which will maximise football for relevant groups. And the type of things we were talking about which were current at that time were the likes of the Open. So, you know, we could have had a stand there, pop-up stand there, where we could actually promote the apprenticeship scheme. So I'm sure there'll be a lot more things like that in the future. Recommendation six, uh, the panel requests that officers provide annual reports to the relevant Poverty and Performance Committee detailing participation trends at, and that rural apprenticeship outcomes are given a permanent place on the performance dashboard. Recommendation seven, officers from the 14 to 19 team should lead in promoting stronger school employment links by the Chamber of Commerce to raise the profile of traineeships and opportunities for work experience. Recommendation eight, promoting stronger school employer links by the Chamber of Commerce and inspiring futures. We wanted also to see that any barriers were removed because a lot of our young people were saying that uh, the cost of bus fares was far too expensive for them or travel in general. And then we have it recently introduced the two pounds my ticket for our 15 and unders, but the, you know this is something that we talked about could be extended to uh, all apprentices who are, you know, are on a considerably low wage compared to others. Recommendation nine: uh, officers and members to support Merth Travel and key partners in lobbying to make transport more affordable for young people. Um, and including the Liverpool City region. And recommendation 10, officers should arrange to discuss the potential transfer of the rural apprenticeship programme responsibilities and associated budgets to children and young people's departments. The reason um, for this recommendation is that the budget actually sits in, in one part, one area, where the work and the monitoring is done in another area. I'm happy to take any questions. Thanks, Anita. Questions, gentlemen? Anybody else? Thank, thank you for that. Comprehensive report. Well presented. I mean, it does highlight a lot of uh, issues that I've seen over the last year. Uh, like, I've been the mayor quite a few big visits from uh, Prince's Trust and lots of other uh, organisations. Like, we're trying to get children involved and motivated. I think the point that you made is education is actually what work life is all about. It's one of the biggest stumbling blocks. But outside of that, it's the, uh, the lack of ability of knowing what direction to move in. And I think you hit both points very well in the report. Uh, I think we have to be able to Thanks, Dave. Eddie? Thank you, Chair. D just one or two things. Um, Three of the council service meetings sat on the apprentice programme, and I'd also like to thank uh, Mike Best for picking up his pieces in the end to be to run our job all the way through it. The, the, the big point I'd just like to make, and uh, I need to be right through it all, which was already a good comprehensive report, is when you look at the apprentices, they, they, they were basically saying they would get support from the uh, employers. Then you ended up going to the schools or the colleges. They were non-existent, listening to the apprentices, what they were saying. There is a massive gap between school and work, and there doesn't seem to be anyone in between to assist them through. I think in the report, it's, uh, it's a very substantial report, but I think, and if, if you ask uh, Councillor Briggs, and he agree with me, that there is a massive difference between a, a college, because the college is one book on seats, you go to university, I hope that's called uh, quite strong in this report. Thank you for the attention. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Thanks, Eddie. Well, Thanks. Um, yeah.
I think there's, there's a massive job of work to be done here. The, the, the group that we've been working on with the target centre is saying young people who are able to meet. And the issues that are coming out, I, I work with this cohort, not getting them into apprenticeships, but trying to get them ready for work. And it is only with all that that recognise the issues that we saw there and then. And that's teaching soft skills, basic communication skills, getting out of bed early, eye contact, the things that we, we take for granted, that these young people just, we're, we're not seeing at home, we're not getting the support for, who were effectively written off by the schools. Then you go on to the more academic, shall we say, 16 to 18 year olds. And the feedback we got is schools were, were effectively a sausage <coughs> factory to feed university. And if you weren't prepared to go down that line, it wasn't that they were reluctant to help you, they just hadn't packed it for tip. So the report's highlighting all of this. And I think really what, what the report is, it's, it's a helicopter view of the issues that we're facing here now. The, the old days of leaving school with three or four O levels at 16, abandoning the apprenticeship, they playing the drum, whatever it may be. Um, largely gone and yet it is an alternative pathway in a young person's education and sadly something that's being overlooked and we hope that the output from this from this report will go some way to address that because let's not forget young, these young people they're not just the economic hours of tomorrow for them in these jobs they're, they are today as well they have an income that be, that's disposable and they'll help drive the economy away Thank you for giving me the opportunity to explain my this motion. It's very simply what it says on the tin. Um, back in uh, July 2011, former Councillor Mark Johnson had just referred to a uh, proposed notice of motion to Council um, titled uh, Shale Gas Fracking, the minutes for that meeting on the 28th of first. Um, and I think it's fair to say that at that time, probably most of it, all we knew about this was a, a headline concerning um, earthquakes near Blackpool. Um, and really, nobody knew anything much more about it. Um, in his motion, Councillor Johnson did mention several other issues. Um, but anyway, it went before Council in that July, and it received uh, all party unanimous approval. Now, um, subsequently, 
has been more in the news in this part of the world, um, resulting in uh, a number of public meetings. And from those that I attended, it was quite obvious to me that the public simply weren't aware that the council had already voted on this and the content of the motion was never been approved. Um, so um, my reason for bringing this to this last July's council was to allow the council to reiterate its position. Um, and uh, obviously the, the further developments that we now know that uh, parts of our coastline could possibly be covered by this. Um, and we've also received information with all the various protections which are already afforded um, to our coastal areas. Um, and it's also of course been established that any operations would require planning approval from us. Um, and the other part of it, of course, is that large parts of these areas, the coastal strip and the Hillary Islands themselves, and the foreshore down to the Lower Park, is within this council's ownership. So it is very much down to us to decide what happens. And I'm also pleased to say that in a recent visit to the Lord Prime Minister, actually told the Will Flow that this council could decide. Um, so, um, the rest of the notice in motion is, allows us to confirm, reaffirm what we have said in July 2011, and in order to try and publicise it a bit more widely, ask the Chief Executive to write to the Secretary of State and to our four members of Parliament, I'm sure I've got it by now, and uh, also to uh, instruct the Chief Executive to write to all the neighbouring coastal authorities to give them the opportunity to say what their position is on it as well. So, uh, it has come to your committee because the mayor said it should. I had rather hoped it might have been decided there on the mic quite simply. But it's now up to you to decide what you want to do with it. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Any questions, gentlemen? Jerry? <laughs> Energy, uh, looking at the problems that the UK has 
in general being probably like in points of answer basically uh, you know by the countries providing coal from all over the place, Australia, coal and so that's pretty much it. Well okay, so we are but we need to look at other alternative forms of uh, energy, especially <coughs> green energy. Uh, I, I can uh, highlight that it was actually where that we've been looking at problems that have been occurring in uh, sand tiles in Canada and also in North America, where they've had major problems with these, this particular uh, type of uh, gas extraction. So we were well at the well there's some reason, a good reason that was why we did move to notice motion when we actually did to council. Nothing's changed as far as I'm concerned. And uh, you will notice the original notice motion statement with a lot of things highlighted in relation to environmental issues and all those things. Government's got to do that and come back. Outside of that, the area itself is covered by Ramsar and quite a few other special sites of interest and uh, qualifications. My only concern, my only concern is that we are the peninsula and the other side of the river, it's a completely different country. And uh, my concern if one of the North Wales authorities can see a cash plan and go for something, then we, we would have to uh, review exactly what they would do over there and argue, make sure that we have the right arguments in place uh, to prevent anything from happening. Outside of that, political fighting in uh, West Kerry, right? say, Jerry, I understand the comments you've made because during the local elections in Eastern, we are able to put say, with them to vote in the school. Uh, quite strangely, it was the name of the cabinet and I moved that. I'm sorry to say that, but that's, that's the way Jane, it is. Please, Original views from the notice of motion was put to council in the first place, uh, and my party will be supported. Thanks, Dean. Rob, and can we stick to the one issue, please? Certainly, Chair. <laughs> Chair, I absolutely object to the politicised lines coming on to from Jenny and the Silver Bay. Let's keep this, let's absolutely keep this into perspective. It's not a Labour government, it is a coalition government okay. that's handed out licenses like confetti for people to go explore yeah. areas yeah. like the day estuary. Yeah, yeah, please. If you want to politicise this, I think really you want to be looking inward and not outward at what's going on. If it wasn't for the coalition government, you wouldn't be looking at this subject now. It's your government that's given out the licenses, and it's your government that's responsible for the fear that that's going on. Right across the country, not just across the world. Thank you, Chair. I was hoping not to politicise this tonight, but thank you, Rob. Good, <laughs> Jerry. Will you? Sorry, Dave. Dave, hang on. You, you had to say, but I will come back to you if you insist. Rob. Sorry, Jerry, sorry. No, I mean, that's right. I mean, you know, the main issue is issues in relation to um, to, to fracking.
I'm glad it's staying non political. <laughs> <laughs> As I said before, we're looking for clarification. I asked David Ball to give me as much information as he could on the gasification and the fracking. And I've got a, a stack of paper about this thick with David. But David's not here tonight. All we're after tonight is clarification. Can I say, anyone from the floor can make another recommendation if you want to get a second there so we can put forward to cabinet. But not, if you don't want to go ahead with the recommendation you've got in front of us, you are obliged to come up with something on the amendments or whatever. Very sensible, John. Thank you. Um, Kevin, would you like to add, subtract, multiply no. in a non political way? As I uh, I mean, obviously, it's it's uh, it, it's a uh, uh, motion that would, would have been discussed that uh, council was was recommended by council. The only two points I would make sure is uh, I think as officers were quite clear to us what the council's position is on on this. Obviously, the uh, planning committee would make its own independent view as a planning committee. Um, mm -hmm. However, chair, even if, just one point out, even if we refuse this as a planning committee, we make so just to get every planning application that's accused for the right of appeal. So I just want to be clear, so don't think that because we as a planning committee refused it, we would, we would not. I do need to say to you though, as, as well, I'm sorry about the, uh, about the frack, because the frack just broke down and goes in whatever direction you want. Uh, there was a, a, a bill passed or put in the Queen's yeah, speech, yeah. Uh, which would allow uh, truly hundred people to land without people necessarily need to give permission for that land. So, that would certainly stop anybody, I think, uh, as a council, from doing anything on Hilbert Island or underneath the coastal strip. I, as an officer chair, can't guarantee that not what's happened underneath because I think Dave said, for all we know, other authorities elsewhere might have a different view. You don't go down, you go in whatever direction you want. Thank you. Right. So, as it stands, we've got a recommendation to go to Cabinet. If anyone wishes to come forward with an amendment or clarification or support for the recommendation we've got in front of us. Um,